Welcome to the session on Discipline and Firing. I'm Nancy Medema, and I'm in charge of the Library Support Network at the State Library. In this session, you'll learn about how those situations we all hope will never happen and how to deal with those and how to deal with them. Here are our goals for this session. We want to be able to define reasons when employee discipline may need to occur, understand what employee discipline is and why it's needed, develop best practices for dealing with employee problems, and be able to apply recommended procedures when necessary to dismiss an employee legally. Obviously, discipline needs to happen when an employee does something that's against the rules or against the law. Even employees who've always been great can have moments when discipline or coaching might be necessary. Listed here are some of the common reasons that you might want when you might want to do discipline. So attendance, that can include continued lateness, a misuse of leave time, unauthorized absences, etc. General misconduct can be insubordination, rudeness either to library staff or patrons, or volatile personality that causes issues. Poor performance is not getting tasks done, constantly sloppy work, or mis um, that type of thing. Misuse of resources includes using email or the internet on a work computer for personal use, social media posts not related to work, etc. Theft, obviously, is um, of either library or city materials or money and harassment or discrimination of staff or patrons. Let me start off by saying, we all hope we never have to discipline our employees, but the reality is that it will happen. Having a good process set up in advance and being consistent are the main keys of it being less stressful and better, makes it better, um, hopefully more successful. Our goal isn't to fire someone, it's to change whatever behavior occurred for the better. And don't ever try to discipline someone in the heat of the moment. That won't end well for anyone. Here are just a couple of definitions of employee discipline. They differ a bit, but mostly indicate that rules or regulations are necessary to ensure a safe and orderly organization or library. And failure to follow those rules results in discipline. Many times that discipline will deter an employee from continuing whatever behavior is that you're disagreeing with. While delivering discipline is difficult for any director or supervisor, having an effective procedure is necessary. We mentioned in the successful hiring session that it's advised to have expectations of the job clearly spelled out and this is when you see the results of doing that. While these steps won't always keep disciplinary issues from occurring, they will make them fewer and further between. A workplace code of conduct and expectations need to be clearly communicated to each and every employee and volunteer because they also have to follow the rules. So for those libraries that are small, don't think this doesn't apply to you. They need to be compliant with state and federal laws, and they need to be consistently enforced. When they aren't, you'll definitely have discipline problems. If employees believe they're being treated fairly, they're much more likely to accept the consequences of their actions. Consistent and fair discipline will also help prevent successful, cl um, pre prevent successful claims of discrimination or other unlawful conduct. Once employees see the discrepancy between actual and expected performance, the burden's on the employee to change. Even with more positive approaches to discipline, organizations still need to have some form of disciplinary procedure, whether formal or informal, that carries successively stiffer penalties for repeated or more serious offenses. These are some common rules or expectations by both the library and the city as to behavior in the workplace from the Society for Human Resource Management or SHRM. You wanna make sure you have rules governing the day-to-day -day situations such as attendance, tardiness, and dress. You might not have a dress code, but you do definitely wanna say what's inappropriate. 
Rules defining what's permissible, such as use of phone or equipment for personal use, such as email, internet, social media, like I said. Rules around more serious conduct, such as drug or alcohol abuse, workplace safety, or sleeping on the job. And yes, I've had employees do that. Rules that, if not followed, may lead to immediate suspension and or termination, such as violence in the workplace or embezzlement. So here's a recommended discipline process. However, these aren't rigid steps. You might need to adapt the process depending on the situation. Progressive discipline provides opportunities to inform the employee and gives them the time and support to make positive changes and improve their performance. You don't want the first time the employee hears of a problem to be in their annual evaluation or in a verbal or written warning unless the charge is extreme or illegal. You might want to adopt a similar process if you don't have one or include some of these steps into what you do have. Before you start any discipline, make sure you have a full understanding of the problem and that you're being accurate and have an impartial assessment of whatever happened. Let the employee know they've done something wrong or that there's a problem you don't want um, you don't want to write them up without their knowledge of there being a problem this step can be a conversation with the employee but if it is a, conver a verbal conversation make sure to follow it up with an email so it's documented and we'll talk more about documentation later coach the employee on the correct method or response or process whatever it is this can be as simple as discussing what should occur and give them some simple steps to move, their, um, move them towards improvement. Sometimes coaching is really more training on a process or an expectation that the employee didn't totally understand to begin with. A verbal warning. It should be given when the employee does something that goes against the work rule or policy. Again, follow up with an email because it's verbal. You want that documentation. A written warning documents in detail what the problem is, what the correct course of action should be, and what will happen if the change doesn't occur or if they repeat the problem. This should also be signed by the director or a supervisor, whichever is more appropriate, and the employee. Give a copy to the employee and put a copy in their personnel file. You can issue more than one written warning before moving on to the next step. So before you get get it too far, you can continue to have multiple written warnings. The final warning. <clears throat> in writing, it should include previous warnings and how the employee failed to improve on whatever that course of action was. Indicate termination is the next step. You can do probation if you would like, which can include a reduction in pay, retraining, or close supervision. That's entirely up to you. Many times this step is skipped. The last step is termination. One important thought on discipline is that you want to make the punishment match the crime. You certainly don't want to fire someone for dressing inappropriately one time. That would be harsh. Coaching the employee on why their choice wasn't the best would certainly be more appropriate for that situation and wouldn't end up with the employee ready to file a lawsuit. Sometimes, but rarely, the regular discipline process doesn't always get us the resolution we're looking for. Using mediation and arbitration can also work well if you have two or more employees who are having issues with each other, not necessarily a problem between an employee and management. These steps are usually required in any union environment, so if you have a union at your library, these will be clearly spelled out. But these steps are usually um, faster and less expensive and less formal than a potential lawsuit would be. So mediation is a voluntary process in which a trained neutral person works with both parties to facilitate an agreement to resolve their dispute. If the problem is between two employees, a manager or a director can act as the mediator, but I would advise bringing in someone from outside the library just to be more neutral. You don't want the impression of favoritism between you and some of your employees. A good mediator will help the parties see the bigger picture, which is difficult when you're in the middle of something, 
and come to a compromise or coming to an agreeable solution that allows ownership from both parties. In many cases, this step will resolve the problem. If not, then you can go on to the arbitration step. Arbitration is a process where both parties agree to have a third party review everything that happened and make a decision on the course of action to be followed. Arbitrators need not be lawyers, but many of them are. This is a process that you will need to hire someone for, preferably someone with arbitration experience. Your city attorney could act as the arbitrator. In this process, the arbitrator may or may not insist on following the court process of supplying evidence and hearing from both parties. That's up to them. The decision that the arbitrator comes to is final. And if the situation should progress to a lawsuit, is usually upheld by the judge. So arbitrators have a lot of power in solving disputes. As they say, document, document, document. These suggestions are from Matt Brick, the lawyer that presented a webinar on the legal aspects of management, which you can find on the State Library's website if you want more information. You want the employee's response to whatever steps, step or steps you use. And you should have someone with you when you meet with the employee if possible. We talk about that a little bit. He goes on to say that email and voicemail are effective forms of documentation. A short email to an employee is sometimes all that's needed. If you do not, if you do not make email or voicemail work for you, it will certainly work against you in the library. In all cases of discipline and even coaching, you want to make sure you document everything. <clears throat> Documentation starts out as notes for the employee's file that you make during their evaluation or when you've commented the employee to the employee about something that you want changed, that you've indicated that there might be a problem in a conversation. This can be as simple as noting when the person is late or not prepared for doing a part of their job. These don't count as part of the process of discipline, such as a written warning, but definitely establish a pattern of behavior that will help you back up any course down the road. You may never need them, but if you do, you're gonna be happy you have them. If you have a conversation about a problem, then it's advised to make sure you follow up with an email to the employee reviewing what you talked about just in case the disgruntled employee files a suit against discipline or termination you need to be able to produce the proof that you followed a progressive course of dealing with the issue if you want to terminate the employee you want to make sure it's not a rash decision and you need to make sure you've protected the library from lawsuits for unlawful termination i strongly recommend discussing with an hr person in your community or a lawyer before that step is taken if you work in a uh, library that has a union, there will be a detailed process written into the contract um, that outlines the required steps or the term um, for discipline or termination. Here are some different items that can be used for documentation. The employee evaluations, we've mentioned that, oops, sorry, let me go back. Um, employee evaluations, the initial complaints, witness reports. So if you are, um, investigating some situation that happened, then you'll want to ask people who saw it to give their view of what happened and do that in writing. Written materials relevant to the investigation, including emails, meetings with the employee, you want those documented, the employee's personnel file, discipline or termination reports, and individual notes of supervisors or other management who might have been involved in different steps of the process. Here's some more thoughts from Matt Brick. So where is the first notice or warning contained? Is it in policy or work rules? Is it in training or a violation of safety rules? Is it in their performance evaluation? Again, consistency is very important. So in these things that are listed here, this is pretty much what he's calling out of those. Here are some suggestions on how to conduct a successful meeting to talk about any discipline. 
you want to make it private. You also want to make sure that any steps you take in the process are done in private with the employee. Sometimes that's really hard in a small library, but try to find a quiet non-public place where there aren't any other staff or volunteers around to overhear. Embarrassing the employee is not going to move the process for towards a mutual solution. You want to keep it as professional as possible. It's, um, it's good to have a witness. You don't always need one, but if the discussion could potentially become heated, then having a neutral party is advised. This shouldn't be a coworker unless it's another manager or supervisor, depending on your size of library. Having someone from HR or the city would be preferable. You don't wanna give mixed messages. Don't compliment them on something they do before calling them out on something else. Deal with the issue at hand. Tell the employee exactly what the problem is, the steps to fix or change the behavior, and the consequences if that doesn't happen. That doesn't mean you can't say to the employee, you've done such a good job, I don't understand why we're having this problem or why this problem has started now. That's not giving mixed messages. That's just letting them know that you're really surprised by this behavior. So just be careful what you say. You wanna remain calm. This is sometimes more easily said than done, but do your best. If you're upset, the chances of the discussion escalating is really high. If tensions rise too much, end the meeting and hold it again at another time. Feel free to just say, okay, we're done here for right now. We'll meet again later. I've actually had to do that and it, was, it saved my sanity. <laughs> you wanna be respectful. Let them know that you do want them to improve and that you're willing to help make that happen. Be sensitive their feet, to their feelings and use constructive criticism, although sometimes any criticism is hard for someone to take, especially in tense situations. Explain what the impact could be. Explain how their actions affected the library overall. This shows that you're focusing on the library and its being, be better being, and not on the employee's personal attributes. After all, you are responsible for the library being successful. Work to find a solution. This helps the employee view the situation as an opportunity to, su to succeed instead of feeling like they've been set up to fail. This also shows your willingness to help them succeed. State what the consequences are. Be clear on what happens if the agreed upon changes don't occur. Make sure they understand what those consequences are. Provide opportunity for comment. Give them a chance to provide feedback. They might not necessarily agree with a course of action, but let them be heard. Have them acknowledge the discussion in writing even if they don't agree with what the outcome is, it indicates that they were part of the discussion and they can't say later that they were never told. Provide a document that lists the offense, the process, and the result, and put on there a place for signatures and dates. You may have several of these, so having the dates is important. After the meeting, make sure you continue to follow up with the employee and look for improvement in their behavior or performance. Don't let this be the end of it. Make sure you follow up and let them know if they are improving. So the firing process. We go through the previous process so that we rarely end up at this final step. Employees that are fired can easily file for unfair termination with the Equal Oppor Employment Opportunity Commission or the EEOC on the grounds of race, sex, religion, age, or political beliefs. There are situations where immediate termination is needed, but make sure you discuss one with an attorney prior to doing so. I can't overstate the importance of that. Do not attempt to fire someone without talking to a lawyer first. When you've done everything you can to improve the productivity or work problems with the employee to no positive outcome, termination is the next and final step. This is definitely a stressful situation for all involved, not just the person getting fired. Remain calm and don't give the impression that your mind can be changed at this point.
Set up a face-to-face -face meeting with them in advance. Approach them with kindness and respect, but be straightforward. The decision has been made. Have a witness sit in on the meeting so you have someone who hears the conversation and can pick up the conversation if needed. Keep it short. You will get asked why, even if you've gone through a long discipline process. Employees never think this will, final step will actually happen. They're in denial a lot. Have an answer prepared that's honest and summarizes, <clears throat> excuse me, summarizes the situation without detail or blame. Provide them with a written statement of the termination, indicating if there are benefits to be paid out, how that will happen, final paychecks, that kind of information. The conversation might not touch on these topics, so you want to make sure they're covered in writing. Again, consult with HR or the city before putting them in writing to make sure you have your facts correct. Have the employee leave immediately because you don't want them to take library property or discuss this with other employees or patrons. You can set up a time to have them come in and get their personal items after you've had a chance to pack them. Disgruntled employees have been known to cause damage to equipment, property, or computer files if allowed to stay in the library after a termination. Also make sure they no longer have access to library email or your website to make changes or send emails. So make sure those are shut down from them immediately. You need to provide a message to the remaining staff that the person is no longer employed but, and this is a big but, <clears throat> you have to maintain their confidentiality so you cannot discuss the reasons or the specifics of the termination. If you have a small staff, that can be really hard because most likely other staff are aware of problems. However, be very careful about what you say. It's very possible that the fired employee will post something on social media that makes them look good and you look bad. Don't be tempted to respond to that, and don't let your staff respond to that. Your actions will determine how other staff view you, so reassure them that their jobs are good if that's the case. But always, always be professional. So that's the information on disciplining and firing. If you have or need further instruction or have a need for further clarification on things or just want to talk a process through, contact your district consultant and they're happy to work with you. But again, before going to that final firing step, make sure you talk to a lawyer first. Thanks.